praying always. What multitudes of prayers we have put up from the first moment when we learned to pray. Our first prayer was a prayer for ourselves. We asked that God would have mercy on us and blot out our sin. He heard us, but then he had blotted out our sins like a cloud. Then we had more prayers for ourselves. We have had to pray for sanctifying grace, for constraining and restraining grace. We have been led to crave for a fresh assurance of faith, for the comfortable application of the promise, for deliverance in the hours of temptation, for help in the time of duty, and for succor in the day of trial. We have been compelled to go to God for our souls as constant beggars asking for everything. Bear witness, children of God, you have never been able to get anything for your souls elsewhere. All the bread your soul has eaten has come down from heaven. All the water of which it has drank has flowed from the living rock, Christ Jesus the Lord. Your soul has never grown rich in itself. It has always been a pensioner upon the daily bounty of God. And hence your prayers have ascended to heaven for a range of spiritual mercies all but infinite. Your wants were innumerable and therefore the supplies have been infinitely great. And your prayers have been as varied as the mercies have been countless. Then you have not cause to say, I love the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplication. For as your prayers have been many, so also have been God's answers to them. He has heard you in the day of trouble, has strengthened you, and has helped you, even when you dishonored him by trembling and doubting at the mercy seat. Remember this, and let it fill your heart with gratitude to God, who has thus graciously heard your poor, weak prayers. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Pray one for another. As an encouragement cheerfully to offer the intercessory prayer, remember that such prayer is the sweetest God ever hears, for the prayer of Christ is of his character. In all the incense which our great high priest now puts into the golden censer, there is not a single grain for himself. His intercession must be the most acceptable of all supplications, and more like our prayer is to Christ, the sweeter it will be. Thus, while petitions for ourselves will be accepted, our pleadings for others, having in them more of the fruits of the Spirit, more love, more faith, more brotherly kindness, will be, through the precious merits of Jesus, the sweetest oblation that we can offer to God, and the very fat of our sacrifice. Remember again that intercessory prayer is exceedingly prevalent, what wonders it has wrought! The word of God teems with its marvelous deeds. Believer, thou hast a mighty engine in thy hand. Use it well, use it constantly, use it with faith, and thou shalt surely be a benefactor to thy brethren. When thou hast the king's ear, speak of him for the suffering members of his body. When thou art favored to draw very near to his throne, and the king saith to thee, Ask, and I will give thee what thou wilt. Let the petitions be, not for thyself alone, but for the many who need his aid. If thou hast grace at all, and are not an intercessor, that grace must be small as a grain of mustard seed. Thou hast just enough grace to float thy soul clear from the quicksand, but thou hast no deep floods of grace, or else thou wouldst carry in thy joyous bark a weighty cargo of the wants of others, and thou wouldst bring back from thy Lord for them rich blessings, which but for thee they might not have obtained. O oh, let my hands forget their skill, my tongue be silent, cold and still. This bounding heart forget to beat, if I forget the mercy seat.